You're listening to the Geekscape Network. Time to fire up the VCR. This one's my favorite. Welcome to Analog Jones in the Tempo Film. I'm Steve. And I'm Sarah. And Sarah's joining us because Matt, well, he had to take the week off. We don't know what he's doing, planning Windy City Horrorama Part 3, I'm sure. But what we decided to do was, because this is the week before, I'm actually, this is a couple days before I'm going to San Diego Comic-Con, Sarah wanted to do an episode so we could put one out, and I gave her a choice of all my VHSs. And I said, Sarah, choose whatever you'd like to watch. And Sarah, what did you choose? Straight talk. Shirley Kenyon couldn't do anything right. I know you've been holding and you should be grateful. Everybody else got cut off. Until she accidentally became Chicago's hottest radio psychologist. Get down off the cross, honey. Somebody needs the wood. <laughs> Now she's talking her way straight to the top. Next time your husband wants to know about your wildest fantasy, just say, honey, it's you getting a job. <laughs> Dolly Parton, Straight Talk, rated PG, starts Friday, April 3rd at a theater near you. Okay, so there's the trailer for it, but really, um, why? Well... I was given the opportunity to look through all of your uh, wall of VHSs and DVDs, and I don't know, this one had bright pink letters that said Straight Talk and a picture of Dolly Parton, and I thought, there's a movie I'm going to enjoy watching. Yeah, it certainly does have Dolly Parton with her huge hair on the front. And also, I've never, ever seen this movie before in 1992 when it came out. I was 12, and I I don't even remember it being in the theaters. No, I don't. I think maybe I had seen this in a video store. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, there was a few Dolly Parton films in the 80s and 90s, but I don't think I ever really watched them. Might have been on, like the WB or something or TBS. I don't know. I actually didn't even realize that she did movies until I found this on your shelf. And then today I was doing some additional research and it seems like she had quite the long history in the movie world. Yeah, she's entertaining. So, I mean, you could see her camera presence right away. I got a little tired of the country folk knowledge I'm not sure if I got tired of that. I think that's what makes this movie kind of charming, that she's so ridiculously country. But I will say that every time she speaks, she uses some sort of weird metaphor. It's yeah. never a normal sentence. So that started to get annoying after a while. Well, that's kind of what I mean is like, I'm busier than a one-legged person in a butt-kicking contest. Right. I was thinking, like, you could have even renamed this movie Wise Words by Dolly Parton instead of Straight Talk. Maybe. I, yeah. I just, uh, <laughs> so, I mean, well, other people starring in this, I guess, is James Wood. That's really all you need to know. And uh, if you don't know how crazy he is... Go ahead, check out his Twitter. We're not going to talk about it anymore. We're just going to talk about what he did on screen. Yeah, he was one of the main characters in this movie. He starts out the movie as a super-duper business newsroom guy who spots a crazy-looking lady by the name of Shirley. Yeah. Well, I mean, before we get into all that, I just wanted to, you know, because there's, there's other people in here. Griffin Dunn, uh, I, I think Griffin Dunn is the um, the boyfriend. No, that's not. Griffin Dunn is Alan, uh, must be his or her producer throughout the movie. That's who Griffin Dunn is. And then he, he's kind of like the 90s guy who's all like slick and shooting guns with his hands and I got to get the job done. Yeah, and he was also in My Girl. 
Oh, was he? Yeah, even... that was one of his. That's one of the movies that he starred in. We also have Michael Madsen, which he played Steve, the boyfriend or the ex-boyfriend. And you'll know him from Quentin Tarantino movies, and you know, he's been in quite a bit. Sin City. Uh, he always plays basically the exact same guy. Kind of like white, trashy, tough. I don't actually remember which character that is. <laughs> Her boyfriend at the beginning, she steals the bowling oh, bag from him. Oh, yeah. Oh, he was, he was such a un, almost unimportant character that... Well, um, he's the one who helps uh, get her off her butt to leave that town. That's true. It was funny that his name was also Steve. Yeah, but I'm Steven. Steve. Oh, sorry. You're Steven. But uh, if you call me Steve, anyone out there, I'm fine with that too. <laughs> yeah, so you picked this out according to the cover because it was bright and everything. Uh, did you notice like the really cheesy Photoshopped guys in the background? I did notice those, but I think that's what made it even more appealing to me because um, they all look very excited and worked up by Dolly Parton talking on the radio. All right. What Matt usually does is uh, he reads us the quotes and, and the summary. So you think you got that? I could probably handle that. Go for it. Well, first, the quotes on there are thumbs up by Siskel and Ebert. Yeah, I was I was surprised by that, but it is it takes place in Chicago, so I'm thinking like they were kind of charmed by it. Yeah, I will say that it was fun to watch Chicago in the background of this movie. I kept trying to figure out where exactly everybody was, um, yeah. but I didn't actually, except for one scene where they were on the bridge. I didn't actually recognize anything. Yeah, and they returned to the bridge at the end. I couldn't figure out where it was either. I mean, it's one of the bridges across well, yeah, the river but, but i don't know if it's clark street or dearborn or any of those other streets yeah because they kept showing like a a, a down view of it, a down to up view of it from kind of like the river and you, you couldn't really get quite a grasp of where it was in the background like where and so i was like damn you camera angle but i will say that um that river has definitely a significance from the beginning to middle of the movie because in the beginning of the movie when she's walking down the street with her friend she has to make a wish in mm -hmm. the little tiny river at Arkansas mm -hmm. and then she gets to Chicago and has to make a wish in the massive huge dirty river dirty river of <laughs> Chicago but yeah so the next quote that I have here is irresistible by the New York Times and Dolly Parton is very winning by CBS This Morning. Winning. Winning. So that's it for the quotes, but here's the description. When down on her luck, country girl Shirley Kenyon walks through the wrong door at the right time, she accidentally becomes Chicago's newest talk radio celebrity and turns the Windy City's hottest radio station upside down. With her homespun wit and down-home advice, Shirley immediately wins listeners' hearts but causes hilarious confusion for her ratings. Conscious Boss, who is played by Griffin Dunn, and, the, and Comical Havoc for the investigative reporter, who is played by James Wood, trying to uncover her mysterious past. If you're looking for a no-nonsense on advice on what hit movie offers you pure entertainment, you'll love every comical minute of straight talk. It's so true. She's so wise. <laughs> Actually, yeah, when I was watching it, I was thinking, well, she's a very, she's a very wise, uh, a very wise in this movie. And I could tell, actually, I don't know if it's a woman's intuition or if I was really paying attention at the beginning, but I could tell that from the very top of the movie, they were setting her up as like a Dear Abby type. Yeah, I thought that was all this was copied off of. I don't actually know when Dear Abby was around. Was it 80s, 90s? I mean, I think it, it, there's a lot of Dear Abbies, and then she has her sister that's another Dear somebody. So I, I don't know. But yeah, it was in the newspapers around that time. 
Yeah, I remember people talking about it. It's always been like a joke in movies too, especially mm-hmm. movies from my childhood. I remember it and I never really got it until I got older and I'm like, oh, so people just, instead of like calling talk radio, you'd actually write a letter to the newspaper. Yeah, that was actually that whole situation where she was looking for jobs in the newspaper. That cracked me up because she was circling them. It's it's like she didn't have a pen. Yeah, so all, she just used nail polish. Yeah, like she could she could buy herself breakfast and she could rent herself a room at the hotel yeah. and she could uh, you know, have a coffee and this and that and but she just couldn't afford a pen. <laughs> so Yeah, wouldn't it be more expensive to <laughs> new, use nail polish after a yeah, while? Yeah, I was like what a waste of nail polish if you're if you're a girl and you're, you know, going to work every day. Nail polish is important. And I would not use that to circle jobs in the Chicago yeah. Sun Times. Which, by the way, they had many shots of Chicago Sun Times uh, delivery trucks mm-hmm. in this movie. So I wonder if they spent some money. <laughs> well, I, I'm sure they use some of the Chicago sometimes to shoot because James Wood is, is a reporter. So they're like, yeah, yeah, sure, you can use our offices to shoot, but we need all the free press we can yeah. get. There were, I mean, these were old school. I mean, I had never, I didn't live in Chicago in 1992, so I don't remember these. What? I didn't, no. I don't remember these uh, big old trucks with the newspapers, but they were definitely sometimes. You could also tell that they really worked hard to clean up the city. Because I, when I was looking around, I go, wow, those sidewalks are no trash. There's no gum. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, there was actually at one point a couple of different shots. And I kept thinking, oh, this is part of the city downtown. Maybe, you know, um, right off Michigan, my, the Michigan Mile. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking that how Magnificent. Old- uh, yeah, sorry, Magnificent Mile. Whoops. Where are you from? <laughs> um, I'm from Arkansas. Um, but I actually felt like it looked a little opposite of what you're saying is like parts of it have definitely been cleaned up. Oh, yeah. Just like now. Yes, yeah, no, the city's gorgeous uh, downtown yeah. in certain parts. Om- almost all year, except when it's like <laughs> full of like sludge from Ugh. the snow. <laughs> oh, like the nine months of the year that yeah. it's snowing. But, yeah, most of the time when I see Chicago in older movies, uh, say, early 90s or definitely the 80s, they always treat Chicago, you know, like a junior New York where it's just like crime ridden, guns everywhere, gangs, you could die at any moment. You know, think um, Adventures in Babysitting. Yeah. When they go downtown to the train to the Union Station, it's just, yeah, it's the scariest place you can be. In 1992 Straight Talk. You know, you're going down there, you're getting oysters and like Chicago's great. Even the river's clean, which is B.S. Right. And actually, what was also really interesting is they must have filmed this, especially there's a couple different shots of her on one of the bridges over the river. They must have filmed this early in the morning or when nobody was on the bridge because (laughs) nobody was on the bridge. And that is not a typical well, downtown Chicago day. <laughs> well, the one was at night. So I was wondering, did they start shooting at like 3 a.m. at dark, you know, to get those night shots? And then they would just keep shooting during the morning. And then finally, when it hit about 8 o'clock, they're like, okay, wrap it up. I don't know. Yeah, but I definitely thought that that was interesting because at no point have I ever walked across the Chicago Bridge without a million other people also being on it. So... Well, maybe they just added more lights to make it look brighter because it still could be dust. They could trick it. That's true. I mean, they, they've they done that in a lot of movies. Um, I mean, nowadays with the digital age, they just fix it in post as much as they can. So let's uh, go into uh, the trailers on this. Now playing at a motion picture theater near you. We didn't have many and they were short, I, you know, so... I know the first one, was it Father of the Bride? Yeah, the first one was Father of the Bride. Great movie, I think. Oh, yeah. Steve Martin at his, like, best dad comedy moment. Yep. And the second one was Sister Act. Another one, awesome. I Matt and I talk about it all the time, doing that one. Oh, if that would be fantastic. That's yeah. a good one to do. But what we thought was really interesting when they were doing the, when we were watching the previews, was that after Sister Act, 
the selling point was that the VHS was under twenty dollars. <laughs> yeah, well, like, why don't you just put, uh, I don't know, fifteen ninety nine, nineteen ninety nine, yeah. or, or maybe put a range like. Find it at your local Walmarts or yada yada for uh, fifteen under. to twenty dollars. For but, under twenty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess they didn't know. I guess everyone charged radically different prices. Yeah, but it it really made me Maybe. realize and think. You know, now you're buying these for a dollar. You're buying some a dollar. What do you think? I $1. made a money. Fifty, fifty cents. But uh, back in the day, man. VHS for under $20. Yeah, they were sp- expensive uh, when they first came out in the 90s. It was tough. I remember being one of the first families in the neighborhood to get a VCR, and it was massive. Wow. You must have lived in a neighborhood where everybody knew each other. <laughs> yeah, and we lived right by a trailer park. We were poor. Oh, uh, well, we also lived right by a trailer park, but... I've seen where you live. It's nothing <laughs> like where I came from. Um, <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and it was it was so big. We and it was a top loader. Whoa, I don't even remember what a top loader looks like. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure we bought it used, and it was probably you know like from the like 1989. <laughs> it was huge. Wow. Yeah. Well, this movie. Could have watched it on your top loader VHS. We could have. Who would uh, would the would the Bay Boys watched Straight Talk back in 1992? Uh, no. <laughs> There's no. no way. It was like maybe we would have watched like a couple minutes of it, then straight to downstairs to put in like whatever wrestling tape was around, <laughs> or Predator, or RoboCop, anything, anything <laughs> but Straight Talk. Does it doesn't have robots, guns, fire, dragons? We'll watch it. Just get Dolly Parton off our TV. <laughs> I actually, my twelve year old self probably would have watched this, but I don't think that my mother would have let me. Really, this? I don't think so. I feel like Straight Talk, Dolly Parton. I think she would have thought it was too adult. Well, what were you allowed to watch? Like, when I was twelve, I was watching Newsies. Okay, I was watching yeah. Disney Channel, Mickey Mouse Club. There you go, Mickey Mouse Club with um, Britney Spears. I, yes, Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake. Mm-hmm. I had a mad crush on Max Costello from Doogie Howser, MD. Oh yeah, the, I remember you telling me that about that. That's still just like you have Doogie Hauser and you and you have a crush on his friend. I've always been more of a not like when you know on a football team you got the the top line. I've always been more of like the second or third string wow, kind of gal. You're really making me feel special. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not blushing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, future presentation, I think, right? Was there another trailer? Nope, there were only two. All right, let's start the film. And now, our feature presentation. And immediately, it's, uh, the, the animated, um, opening credits of the dancing, the dancing feet. Uh, yeah, I actually was struggling to pick up that that was, I mean, you got it, that it was the tango or whatever, but I was trying to th- it to me it looked like it was uh a femur uh bone <laughs> like i couldn't figure out a femur bone yeah femur <laughs> a femur <laughs> yeah i didn't get why they did an animated opening credit sequence of dance steps cuz she starts out as a dance instructor but that's really all the dancing we get. We get a little bit with James Woods, three fourths of the film or something, maybe halfway during the film. But shouldn't it be like radio waves or something like that? Since it's straight talk and she's on the radio, yeah, or something media related. I don't under. If you knew nothing about this film and you'd never seen a trailer and it would have started with dance steps like that, you'd have been like, oh, this is a movie, a romantic comedy about dancing. Yeah, that's true. I would agree with that. I think that's confusing, but whatever. She gets fired. Yeah, she gets fired in a really sneaky kind of way, though. 
um, her boss tries to talk in third person about yeah. her. It was really confusing. But if, anyway, I guess the bottom line is that she gets fired for talking too much instead of working. So yeah, I think but that's what's actually, funny was, is he stopped her from working to talk to fire her because she talked too much. Yeah, it was it was a real dick move all yeah. the way around. But it definitely set up this whole movie. It was the main point was because later in the movie called Straight Talk, she was going to be talking a lot. And she does. And she does. So I think it was a good setup to um, what was going to happen later. Yeah, because she comes home and then we see her dirtbag boyfriend who hasn't had a job for eight months who has a six pack in the fridge and decides to leave because she can't do anything right. Yeah. Her she can't unemployed cook. boyfriend tells her <laughs> she can't do anything right. Yeah. She uh, can't clean. She can't cook. And actually weren't they eating dinner that she cooked? I can't remember if they were eating dinner, but I, I also, I don't remember why she said Chicago. Why, like, the setup was like, the, let's go to Chicago. The only setup was because it wasn't their Arkansas. little <laughs> their little town. And, I mean, I guess in Arkansas, you either got to go north. You, what, were you going to say Dallas? I mean, maybe they could have. But the whole point was, was it Arkansas? Is that where they're from? Yeah, that's what it says here is a small town in Arkansas. Okay. I could be wrong. I thought, it, I you it know, I think work. I read that on Wikipedia that the, the setting was Arkansas. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, she goes up to the big city of Chicago just cause and randomly gets a little week hotel that how much did it cost a week? Was it one twenty? Yeah. Yeah. But it was a real shithole. Yeah. And then she, she ends up uh, meeting this girl at a breakfast because she orders the early bird special, which is one egg over easy. And a coffee. And a coffee. What? Yeah. I, I, you can't even give them two eggs? I've never seen anyone give one egg. I, I don't know. I I wasn't old enough to be ordering that special in 1992. So I don't know if that's like a normal thing or what. I don't know. Um but, but who's the girl? Who's the actress that she bumps into? Um, it is Lois Lane. Lois, she's Lois Lane from the Superman move from the Superman TV show, <laughs> but I don't know her real name. Wait, she was I, I just know her from Desperate Housewives. Yeah, but she was Lois. She was Lois Lane in Terry the Hatcher Superman. Yeah, in the Superman movies. Sorry, no, not movies. The Superman. TV show. Oh, that's right. Lewis and Clark. Yeah. I was thinking of Smallville. <laughs> oh, no. no. I don't I... think. Yeah, man. I forgot. That's like Dean Kane, right? Yeah. That's yeah. where I knew her first and foremost. So when I see her, that's where I, what I think of before I even think of Desperate Housewives. I always think of her as Terry Hatcher from Seinfeld. They're real and they're spectacular. Yeah. But I, I feel like we skipped a very important part of this movie. Um, oh, James Wood is on the bridge. Yeah, yeah, I think that is probably a part that we should discuss. She drops a $20 bill and goes over the ledge, of the, which, I mean, it's $20, I get it, but she goes over, she ends up getting her heel caught, she has to take it off to put gum on the end of the heel so she can grab her $20 bill. But James Woods, from his office in a high rise. Well, I'm actually, if it's the Chicago Times, it's right there. Yeah. So he runs out of his office all the way down to her on the bridge and actually almost kills her trying to save her life because he right. thought she was trying to kill herself. Yeah. She basically jumps over the ledge on the bridge to grab her money. Yeah. And he sees that, comes down, and is trying to like save her life. So we know from the very beginning that this is going to have some sort of romantic encounter later. Yeah, what I did like was they didn't have him save her life or anything because this is supposed to be, you know, um, there, there's female empowerment here. You can see it uh, with her. You know, she's going into the big city. She's taking care of herself. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I like it that he actually is like, he makes it worse. So right. you could, could kind of read in, you know, just like, you know, men can get in the way or something like that's how he's reading it. Uh, well, she just got out of a bad relationship. Men are kind of shit to her right now. Well, no, so. I don't think she ever hates men. She just wants to do it on her own. Yeah. Well, OK, I agree. I, I mean, I don't. I, I think she. Yeah, you're probably right. She yeah, because she him. apologizes to James Woods for accidentally <clears throat> making Terry Hatcher break up with him. Yeah. Because but he's a workaholic, but she, I, I forget the conversation. Well, basically, but. like, Dolly Parton, in her MO in the world anyway, is a very independent female mm -hmm. Um, business, I mean, in her regular life, businesswoman, musician, actress. So I think that was probably the part of this that was truly her mm -hmm. and telling this girl sitting at a ca counter with her, like, don't, don't you even think about, like, be, be busy, make him want you. Um, maybe that was this time, like you said, it was girl, female empowerment. Maybe this was a time in that those things were happening. Yeah, of course. So 1992 was the year of the woman. It was supposed to be 1984, political wise, but uh, didn't come until 1992 when a record amount of women were elected into uh, either Congress. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely what they were going for on this. Uh, I, I think this just happened to come out at the time, and that's who Dolly Parton was, was, you know, the powerful woman uh, country singer who was tearing it up on the charts and in the theater. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, even though this is the first Dolly Parton movie I think I've ever seen. I have never seen any other Dolly Parton movie. <laughs> oh, I just figured out, too, that gift that I sent you during work that was not from this movie. Oh, no, it wasn't. Yeah, so Stephen and I were supposed to watch this yesterday, and do the podcast yesterday. So during the work day, he sent me a gif of Dolly Parton. Yeah, she had a, ro a lasso and she was like lassoing a guy. I yeah, lassoing a guy. And we, I was like, oh, I can't wait to watch it. And he responds, I'm not even sure if it's in this movie. So in case anybody's interested, it is not. It's a great gif, though. Like yeah, it's a I, good I gift. I want to figure out more ways to use the Dolly Parton lassoing some guy gif. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, yeah. how do I use that? I wonder what mo I wonder if it's an earlier or a later movie. I mean, she essentially looks the same. Yeah. At all times. <laughs> so. And I think there were only two boob uh, comments slash jokes in this, which I thought was, I, I was surprised by the first one when she's looking through for all the jobs and they're like, and she was dancing for a bar? Yeah, so she went into a, I think a strip joint. Well, I don't think it was, because when she walked out, it was it said bar and grill. Yeah, so there's also, in her real life, she had been approached many, 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 many times about posing naked for Playboy. Oh, yeah. I'm and sure. refused to do it. And so... The way that she uh, did it instead was she did pose on a cover for them in a bunny outfit. But that's as far as she would go. Oh, I didn't so even I, know that. Yeah, so I think that... I actually think that in many ways this movie coincides with a lot of different things that have happened to her in some way, shape, or form. So that's kind of what I see there. Yeah, maybe. that That would make sense. But yeah, when she... The guy goes, oh, that's great. That's great, doll. Show us your... Does he say tits or boobs? I don't know. Breasts? I don't remember. I doubt he says... Well, maybe he says breasts. No, I but... think he says, that's great. Show us your tits. And then she immediately... She walks out. I, I yeah. was surprised because I was like, whoa, that was brash. Great, Angel. Now show us your tits. Yeah, but I think that was when you turned to me and you said, are those real? I don't know. Like, I, <laughs> Actually, I, and the thing is, is like, I'm inclined to say that they are, but Dolly Parton is also a big uh, plastic surgery person, so I'm not sure if they are real. But I, 
feel like I heard a rumor that they were real, or I've seen her actually say in real life that they are real. Okay. I, I mean, I don't. I was just like wondering because they look incredibly fake. Yeah, I don't know. She's very petite. Yeah. I wonder That's, how tall she is. But either way, I don't really care. Um, no, you don't care about boobs. I know. I never said that. What are you talking about? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Hold the phone. Uh-huh. I'm just saying, writers, a few writers, <laughs> listeners. If we were playing Are They Real or Not, I wonder what the uh, over-under would be on Yes, No. Yeah. If anybody knows and wants to add some details here, you know, put it in the comments after this episode airs. Yeah. And if you do know the truth, then embarrass us with your fact-checking skills. Yeah. Because we ain't going to do it. No, I'm not going to look that up. (laughs) I know. I don't want that shit on my uh, Google browser history. (laughs) Yeah. Because I was looking stuff up at work, and I wasn't going to look that up at work. No. Um, I'm sure it's been asked many times. But uh, moving on, she what starts this whole story is she walks into some type of media center uh, that I don't even know what it is. Radio station. Oh, they didn't do like TV shows and stuff like that? No, it was just a radio station. It's just a radio station. Yeah. Okay. All right. So and, she's standing outside and yeah. she's listening to them because it has that glass screen. And so people on the road can see them doing a radio show. Oh, yeah. And it has, what's his name? Um, Chicago's very own um, Jeff um, Garland. Garland. Jeff yeah. Garland's one of the like wacky, crazy radio guys. Yeah. And so she stands there for a bit and she goes in and she starts talking to the lady that is working the switchboard. Mm hmm. And she asks the lady for a job. Yeah, and she talks her way into it because she has absolutely no experience, but she's just so damn nice. Did you realize that the lady who was working the switchboard was the cop on the show Barry? No, but yep. wow. Mm-hmm. Nice snag. Yeah. I noticed that straight off the top. I mean, she's, what, 20 years younger, but... Paula Newsom. Yeah. Wow. Good. Good catch. Uh, Yeah, so she ends up accidentally hanging up on people, and then it's her coffee break, and this is when she gets her big break on her coffee break. Yeah, she walks right into the studio to get coffee. Um, The guys that are running the show are waiting for another radio talk show host, a doctor, to show up and do some Dear Abby type of doctor talk show kind of like a fraser situation yeah and, that's exactly what i was thinking <laughs> yeah and uh and she just happens to be at the wrong place at the right time yep and it works and she's immediately natural and this kicks into you've seen this story a lot where the boss comes in and is like what do you guys do and sh- that's that was terrible but all the listeners on the other hand are like we love her so she ends up getting the job the nice apartment the nice car yeah her wardrobe improves significantly over yes. the course of the movie and her hair gets a little higher yeah it actually it goes from like curly wavy to like this the real like straight business lady look but with a yeah. massive poof how do you tap. do that? <laughs> I probably, it's just called like feathering, I think. But I i don't remember. I could probably have done it back in the 90s. But yeah, not not a fan of that one. She uh, still wears her hair like that. I noticed. Yeah, when we <laughs> looked up. Yeah, I know. I was like, damn, it's basically the same hairdo. I mean, she really doesn't look that much different from... Uh, <laughs> I mean, she actually, I think she... She might be the same weight. She but, might be the same weight. I think she's really beautiful in this movie. Honestly, I think she... She looks incredible. She's 46. Yeah, but I think she's really beautiful. I think she's always been pretty beautiful, yeah. though. Yeah, she's just got... She's naturally petite, little, adorable. Yeah. Yeah, so it's... Yeah, it's just a, I, I just, I couldn't believe she was 46. If you would have said, like, oh, how old is she in this movie? I'd have been like, nah, 10 years. I would have said 10 years younger. Yeah. I would have said 36, yeah. 37. Yeah. She just looks healthy, like, incredibly healthy and vibrant. Yeah. So she's, she's got great genetics. Sure does. Uh, yeah. And then what? 
So, yeah, she ends up bumping into James Woods again because James Woods does not believe the story that this doctor out of nowhere who lives in a bad apartment who was trying to, you know, risk her life over $20 at the beginning of the film. He's, he smells a rat. Right. And he starts investigating her and he goes back to her hometown. And uh, so you kind of have that paralleling with Dolly Parton's character Surely not being comfortable being rich. Right. She constantly is saying like, who needs a $60,000 car? What do you mean this champagne's free? <laughs> yeah, she's very hometown, small town girl. I kind of like that about her, though. I, I She's a little too naive for me at certain points. I'm like, come on. I mean, but the whole movie, she's like talking in metaphors. Like, what else do you expect? Yeah, it's. I'm trying to remember what was the one about the squirrel, the squirrel and the fish. Oh, I don't know. I sh- I didn't write down any of her metaphors. There's too many. Yeah, there, I mean, the, every sentence she said was a metaphor. Like my was, mama said, my granddaddy said, and I'm just yeah. Like, what, Papa so always said. Yeah, there's just so many coming at you. You're just like whoa. It's, it's like Dave Chappelle and jokes in like half baked. <laughs> it's like I can't remember them all. Uh, but. So that whole thing happens, and James Woods goes back to her hometown of Arkansas, talks to Steve, uh, Steve getting the more information. Bag. Yeah, and then Steve somehow tracks down Shirley in Chicago. Maybe that's because she went nationwide when she was interviewed, and a psychologist, or was it a psychologist? This was the part where I kind of dozed off for a minute. (laughs) They were on TV and they were trying to, you know, kind of like mock her and out her. Like, where did you get your, where did you get your degree or something? And she's like, I'll tell you where I got my degree. It's, what was it? It was just, uh, you're an ass. (laughs) Yeah, I don't remember. You're an ass university. Uh, Hi, you're on the air. Hello, can you hear me? Loud and clear, Joan. This is Joan. She's 48. She has a marital problem. And please, doctors, in the interest of brevity, keep your responses to Joan's problem down to a minute. Go ahead, Joan. Well, my husband's been having an affair for a year, and I found out about it about six months ago, and I asked him to stop, but he won't. So I wrote a letter to the woman he's seeing and asked her not to see him. But she showed hey, him to Hey, him. hey, hey, will you get out of it? What is he stop. doing? And I'm so filled with, with anger toward him, I don't know what I'm going to do. Dr. Edmund, hold that shot, too. Joan, do you want a divorce? No. Then I would suggest that you let sleeping dogs lie. And what? You'll no, have your Joan. turn. You do not hate your husband for doing this. You hate yourself for allowing Single it Single on to one of the doctor. Give me now, one. If you felt better about yourself, maybe uh, your husband wouldn't need to be with this other woman. He'd want to be with you. It's her fault her husband's cheating? I- I'm simply suggesting that she look to herself first. Maybe she's too demanding in bed. Too demanding in bed? You talk wow. to your callers like that. You should be disbarred or derailed or whatever they do to doctors. Derailed? Derailed? <laughs> Where did you receive your training, if I may ask, doctor? Where did I receive my training? Yes. I'm a graduate of Harvard, postgraduate studies at the Sorbonne. Where did you train? Where did I train? I'll tell you where I trained at. Screw you. What? <laughs> you know who came up with the expression, let sleeping dogs lie? A dog. Come on, and, and John, honey, Tight. you are not going to change him. You got to live with it or end it. Tinkle or get off the potty. Either way, you'll start to like yourself again. Yes. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes! Oh, Shirley! Oh, 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 oh. Anyway, like that got her nationwide attention. I think Steve noticed it on TV, so he comes up to Chicago to do nothing. He, I think, like I. Oh, he wonder... wants his bowling bag. Oh yeah, so she makes a point in one of her tips to a listener to pack up the bowling bag and go out into the world and get out of there. And all of the people working in the sound room are like bowling bag. Why bowling bag? So that statement Mm -hmm. 
brings it all back around. Like she said bowling bag because that's what she did. She took her boyfriend's bowling bag and packed it with a lot of shit and left. Yeah, that was he comes and gets his bowling bag. Um, but he punches James Woods in the face before he leaves. And then a little uh, little hanky panky happens between uh, Dolly Parton and James Woods. Yeah. And there's your second boob joke. Okay, yeah. Where he goes, what does he say? Uh, oh, my. Holy moly. Is that all you can say? Holy moly. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sounds right. And then she's like, that's all you have to say? And he goes, oh, Oh, My. so Something yes. Like okay, that. so actually, I was starting to get confused, but this is the part where they start to actually like make out, mm -hmm. and they are in a. What they do is they have the camera set up to look at a doorway, mm -hmm. and Dolly Parton and James Woods is you know they're not on scene, but their clothes are coming off and being thrown. Yeah. Into the doorway, and so that's when she says, "Yeah, uh, that's all you have to say." Yeah, and then he just repeats the same oh thing, my. slower and deeper. <laughs> yeah, oh so my, he gets uh, they they get it on. Yeah, but I I mean, was that really directly a boob a boob joke? Yes. Really? I'm gonna go with a yes. You don't think so? I mean, I thought it was just the whole package. But maybe I get, I get where you're going with that. Well, I mean, that's... Come on. It's Dolly Parton. That, that's the joke. Yeah. Yeah. But that just takes away from the whole, like, woman empowerment thing. Why does it... What? I mean... Because, like... They didn't she, sell her off as an object. I don't think so. Yeah. To me, I mean... Yeah. I mean, don't strippers, some of them, like, the whole nude body is part of their power? Oh, well, we're not talking about that. Yeah, let's not go there. Uh, so he, uh, what happens next? She, oh, she outs herself. That's right. Because James Woods won't print the story that she's a fraud. She's not really a doctor. But a mad, uh, I don't, a, a woman who was divorced from her husband because of Shirley. She comes up, she's like, you don't know the whole story. You're just, you know, getting a little bit of the story and then uh, telling these people what to do with their life. And she feels bad about it. So she quits on air and says, I'm not a doctor. I'm sorry. I quit. And she won't even take her pink Cadillac. Was Which, by the way, she got a pink Cadillac. Or was it a Ferrari? I don't Cadillac? know, but it was really cool. Yeah, I can't remember. Okay. I never even actually saw the car. Yeah, it was on screen. They showed, they brought it to no, her. No, I, I didn't. I missed it. Oh, okay. It's beautiful. Okay. I would have kept that car. Yeah. She, I oh, remember yeah. she said, who needs a $60,000 car? And I was like, oh, it's another naive. <laughs> like, it's like, I don't need that. All I'd, rather, about you. <laughs> I'd rather walk around on these pumps. <laughs> yeah, she's in high heels this entire movie. Yeah. How does her poor little feet take that? I'm pretty sure she's probably in high heels all the time. I'm still going to say her feet are struggling. I By the know. end of the day? Oof. Some women, they train themselves to wear those shoes nonstop. She then uh, basically becomes herself, you know, and is like, I won't do it. But I, I think they end up taking her back anyway. She becomes well, yeah, just Shirley. But James Woods comes out again, kind of like the beginning because she's at the bridge, and he's like, don't jump. I think that was supposed to be like a playful joke. It was joke. a joke, yeah. yeah. And then they kiss, and they fall in love, yeah. and it says the end. It is. It's a very uh, a very circle back to the beginning where they met, where it was hectic, and she was telling him to go away, but they meet in the same place, and they're forever in love. Yeah, and it was a actual romantic comedy that – didn't like annoy me yeah i didn't think it was annoying either i thought it was kind of cute i appreciate dolly parton 
especially because this is the first time I've seen her in a movie. Um, I appreciate her acting skills. Yeah. Not because I think they're good, but I mean the fact that she can act and sing and do all of those things. Do we suggest people to watch Straight Talk? Gosh, moment of silence. I don't think we have to suggest that people watch Straight Talk. No, for our listeners, Analog Jones, no, not at all. No, I would say, actually, I would say that maybe if our listeners were women in their 50s and 60s, they should definitely pull it out and watch it again. But for the Analog Jones clientele, I would say uh, no. No. Yeah. <laughs> but and if you want to watch James Woods not be crazy, this is a good one. Yeah. I thought he was quite the straight jacket here. Yeah. I, I They definitely let her shine. He does a good job of staying in the background. Um, and they both quit their jobs at one point in this movie. I was just like, well, it's like it was during the nineties when the economy was good. It's like, yeah. I'll get another job at any time. Yeah. So it I'll was... just get the paper and find it <laughs> and circle it with nail polish. <laughs> so let's move on to the museum. This is the second time I've had to reclaim my property from you. That belongs in a museum. So do you. This is the part of the show that we're bringing back because we forgot for an entire month to do it before. But uh, we go out there in the, the film jungle and bring something back. Do you need a moment? I don't. I already know. Okay. So I am going to put in the museum and maybe maybe you can find some uh, sound on this. But all of the times that she goes, ah ha ha. Oh, yeah, her laugh. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's, I can't do it because it's so cute and cheesy and it's so Dolly Parton. But I'm going to take that laugh and I'm going to put it right on the shelf and keep it there because every time she did it, I was a little annoyed. I would say 20% annoyed, but 80% I thought it was adorable. <laughs> no, no. I'm going to put that hair in the museum because <laughs> I, I just sat there and there... Like, there's a lot to look at at Dolly Parton. Obviously, the big boobs, and that would be the joke. But my eyes went way farther up. I stared at her hair. She could, like, there was lines I missed, because in my head, I'm like, Jesus, that hair's got to be, like, three feet high. Yeah. How do you do that? You absolutely did say that to me about three times. Yeah. <laughs> like, how is that possible? Yeah. And then the background when she was in the, the party. And with all the rich people and everything, Mm -hmm. I was like, there was just layers and layers of gigantic hair. That's what how they did their hair back then. I was just amazed, and like, I can't. I I would hate it. Please, please, never come back. Maybe the '80s big hair can come back. The like teased look and all that. I could do that, but like the early '90s, like, I don't even. What do you call that? I. Keep wanting to say like the feathered mohawk, like I don't not I don't mohawk, know. but like yeah. mullet, like the feathered female yeah. mullet or something. It reminds me of Coffee Talk with Mike Myers when yeah. they're constantly Coffee adjusting. Talk. Yeah, they're constantly adjusting their giant wigs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just like they were so huge. I didn't see a lot of shoulder pads in this movie. I saw a little bit, but I'm a little disappointed we didn't get more shoulder pads. I mean, but on the cover, she has giant shoulder pads. Yeah, she's wearing a basically a football jersey on the cover of this that, movie. I know. I, I thought we were going to see shoulder pads all day, every suit, every everything. And then it really wasn't. They actually dressed her really well. Yeah, she was dressed really nicely, aside from some of the obnoxious colors, because I think at one point she was wearing like a bright yellow business suit. But for the most part, they had her. Yeah. In really nice clothes that I would even wear myself yeah. if I could. All right. That's going to wrap it up for Straight Talk. Uh, I'll let you uh, have the last word. Any any other anything? Well, you know, if somebody were to call me up and ask me for advice, I would say, you know, you don't need to watch Straight Talk. But if you feel like 
You have an hour and 30 minutes to just sit back, relax, and stare at some big boobs. You might as well. I Yeah, okay. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. <laughs> uh, yeah, and if you really like a lot of folksy wisdom. And big hair. This is the movie for you. You can catch us, subscribe on Podbean, iTunes, Google Play. There, we're on a lot of things. There's too many to keep up with. And you can also email us at analogjonestof at gmail.com or come to our Facebook page and just leave a comment on whatever you want. We, we love to talk to you guys. Uh, and remember to be kind. Rewind!